Now moving on to skin suturing. I've told you how we take the basic knots. Now let's talk about skin suturing. So the first principle in skin suturing is that we want everted edges. Now this is something which some students get confused in. They think inverted edges would be better. No epithelium to epithelium will never heal. The edges for skin need to be everted. Always remember that everted edges. In bowel anastomosis, we will discuss that we want inverted edges. But here we want everted edges. And there are certain basics which I want you to understand that whenever we are using your needle to take sutures, we always enter the skin. Enter skin at 90 degree angle. This was asked in the INICT exam two and a half years back, and I will demonstrate it when I show you the practical videos as well. Now, there are basic principles of skin suturing. This is an image directly out of Bailey. Now, here X is the depth of the wound, right? X is the depth of the wound. And what you need to know is that the bite on each side of the midline or the laceration needs to be X. Right, so bite on each side is X means equivalent to the depth of the wound. But the distance between two sutures and this question has been asked in the exam is 2X is two times the depth of the wound. Please remember that for your exam. Now, what are the different types of sutures which are there? You can have a simple suture. Simple suture, I'm sure all of you must have taken. If this is the laceration, simple suture is when you pass your needle from one side, you come out on the other side and then you tie it. That is a simple suture, right? Let me just show you a video of how simple sutures are taken. Just a simple sutures, you enter at right angles. That's what I told you that was asked in the INICT exam. We enter at right angles. We come out on the other side. We come out on the other side. Again, I told you a V is going to form. This is our V which is formed. And we are just going to take two wraps cross then go on the other again take a single throw cross again take a single throw cross so this is our simple suture which we take and we want eversion of the skin edge when we are doing skin suturing so you saw simple sutures now if simple sutures fail to cause eversion if simple sutures fail to cause eversion that can happen sometimes Right, where simple sutures will not cause eversion of the skin. And we know if the skin does not get everted, then it will not heal. So in that case, if simple sutures fail, then we can use mattress sutures. And there are two types of mattress sutures which are there. You can have a horizontal mattress. This is a horizontal mattress or you can have a vertical mattress suture. And let me just explain to you here in these images, then I'll show you a practical video of how they are done. Now, horizontal mattress is that we will go from one side to the other side and then adjacent to it. This is point A, then adjacent to point A. On the side of point A, from point B, we are going to come back at the same depth. I will come back to the same side. So now both the threads are on the same side. And when I tie this, this would become a horizontal mattress suture, which helps in eversion, which helps in eversion of the skin. Vertical mattress suture is, vertical mattress suture I want you to see here. Vertical mattress is when I go deep, I start here, I go deep to the other side and then I come back superficially. Right, so deep bite to the other side, come back superficially. Again, both the threads are on the same side. And when I tie them, this is a vertical mattress, which also helps in eversion of the skin. So both mattress sutures help in eversion and they are hemostatic as well. They can stop bleeding as well. Now, let me show you a video of mattress sutures before we move on. Now, if a simple suture does not cause skin eversion, then we need to take mattress sutures. And I told you there are two mattress sutures. We can take horizontal mattress and vertical mattress. So first, let me demonstrate to you what a horizontal mattress is. So in a horizontal mattress, I am again going to enter at right angles and I come out on the other side. I'm going to come out on the other side. So this I've come out on the other side. Right. And horizontal mattress is when I'm going to take a bite now adjacent to this. So I've come out on this side. Now I'm going to take a bite adjacent to this and I'm going to return back at the same depth. I'm returning back. 
okay so at the same depth i've returned back and now you can see that both the threads are on the same side okay and they are adjacent to each other i will again cross and when i cross you can see the two edges have come together and there is eversion of the edges right and i cross again and i cross again this is a horizontal mattress suture so you can see the two bites are adjacent to each other now how is vertical mattress different from horizontal mattress so in vertical mattress i again enter at right angles and i go deep to the other side so i've gone deep to the other side right so i've come out on the other side this is a v which is there and now i am going to i'm going to come back but in the same line i come back superficially okay so same line i come back superficially now so in instead of a horizontal mattress where it was on the side to side this is just one in front of the other and the first bite was deep the second bite was superficial both the threads are on the same side and now we suture it now we are going to suture it this is a vertical mattress so you can see here that here the bites were one in front of the other whereas in horizontal they were on the side and both these suturing techniques cause eversion of the skin now sometimes when we take sutures when you take sutures you will see when you open the dressing after a few days you will see sometimes the suture has cut through the skin right so it can cut through the skin this is known as the cut through rate and amongst the sutures which i have explained to you i want you to remember that horizontal mattress has the least cut through rate where it will have the least chance of tearing the skin right so it will have the least cut through rate is of horizontal mattress suture this question was also asked four or five years back in the exam now moving on to more techniques about skin suturing these are subcuticular sutures very important it has been asked multiple times in the last few years now subcuticular sutures are cosmetically better they are cosmetically better because here you can see that the entire thread is inside there are no marks on the skin right there are no marks on the skin subcuticular suturing the suture material commonly used is a 30 monocryl on a cutting needle this we will discuss later what is monocryl and what are cutting and round body needles but this is something which i want you to remember because this has been asked in the exam i'll tell you about these later on in this module now let's see subcuticular sutures video and then we'll talk about the other suturing techniques so now i'm going to demonstrate a subcuticular suture which we know is cosmetically better and for subcuticular sutures we use a 30 monocryl usually on a cutting needle so you can see this is a transparent suture like monocryl and what i'm going to do first is that everything needs to be buried inside right i don't want anything to be visible outside so i am going to take a bite from inside right this is my edge so i take a bite from inside and then i am going to tie it right so this is my suture which is there and i am going to tie this now as a continuous suture so i am going to cross it as we've done right i cross i cross every time and now this suture which i have on the other side i will run it from inside and you would see as compared to a continuous suture which i showed to you which was visible outside this suture will not be visible outside right this suture will all be hidden inside but the skin will get keep on getting closed right skin will keep on getting closed right so you can see here i've taken this bite and you can see when i pull it you can see the skin is getting closed this of course is our other edge which we can cut and now you would see that the suture remains hidden inside completely okay let me take another bite for you so this bite i've taken here and i take another bite on the other side and you can see that the skin has started closing but nothing is visible outside so that is a subcuticular suture you can see here subcuticular suture no marks outside and again we are going to end with an aberdeens or a cobbler's knot so that was regarding subcuticular sutures let me show you about other sutures as well interrupted sutures i've already shown you they are like simple sutures which we are taken buried mattress sutures is 
this also helps in closure. This is also like a mattress suture only, buried mattress suture. This is a continuous suture where we keep on taking continuous bites. And one thing which I want to tell you is that when we close a continuous suture, we use an Aberdeen's knot or a cobbler's knot at the end to close a continuous suture and let me show you a video of how Aberdeen's or cobbler's knot is taken because this is also a skill which I am sure you will use when you are suturing an episiotomy in gynecology or when you are closing an abdomen in surgery. So I am going to demonstrate to you how a continuous suture is taken. We have already discussed that we will hold the needle at the one third, two third junction and I am going to enter at right angles. So once I enter at right angles, I am going to come out on the other side. So you can see I am coming out on the other side and I am not holding the needle with my hand because I don't want a needle stick injury. So once I come towards the end, you can see that I will get a V like this. Now when I have to take a knot, I have to cross. We have already discussed that we have to cross. So just for the ease of demonstration, I am telling you that this is how we cross. Okay, now this is the V again which I am getting and again I remain inside the V and I cross. And I again remain inside the V and I cross. And you saw that I wrapped the thread two times first time around and then a single time. So I am taking a surgeon's knot. Now once I have taken, then I am going to start taking my continuous suture. Means I will start taking continuous bites. So I will get it out from the from one side, put it on one side, get it out from the other side. right? And these are my continuous bites which I will keep on taking. So this is a continuous suture. Right, this is the continuous suture which I am taking. Now, one thing which I want to tell you here is how do we close a continuous suture at the end? Okay, so when we reach till the end, then we are going to use an Aberdeen's knot, right? So, if supposing I've reached the end here, if supposing I've reached the end here, so I am left with a loop, I am left with a loop, and I am left with one thread. So here we are going to take the Aberdeen's knot to close the continuous suture. And how is this Aberdeen's knot taken? The other knot, the other name for Aberdeen's knot is the cobbler's knot. So if you've got your shoes fixed, you would have seen this knot as well. So what I'm doing here, you can see that I'm using my fingers to create this triangle, and then I'm going to use my I'm going to use my finger to draw out this thread through this triangle again. Okay? And you must have seen your residents do this and they enjoy this activity so much that they just keep on doing it, right? It's, it's so satisfying that you just keep on drawing this thread through this triangle. And then in the end, once I've taken, I've passed it four or five times, then all I need to do is I need to pass this needle through this triangle. So when I pass this needle through this triangle, I started with one thread and I'm ending with one thread. Can you see the knot has formed and I've ended with one thread. And now what I can do is I can just take a bite and I can bury this thread. I can just bury this thread. So that is how we take a continuous suture. So the next one is a locking suture. This is also a type of a continuous suture only in which we keep on locking the suture and this helps in distribution of tension. Right, this helps in distribution of tension. This locking suture has not been asked in any of the exam. This is a purse string suture. Purse string sutures, I'm sure you must have seen these girls wearing, when they go for these marriages, they wear these portlies in their uh, wrists right and they have two threads when you pull on the threads the mouth of that bag closes so that is a typical purse string suture now where are purse string sutures used in surgery purse string sutures are used to bury a pendicular stump when we are doing appendicectomy so bury a pendicular stump it can also be used for cervical encirclage in gynecology if there is an incompetent cervix so cervical encirclage also we can use a purse string suture, right? This is an unnamed suturing technique just for fun. This is not a named suturing technique. Now there's one more suture which has not been asked in the exam, but uh, you can just know about it. This we know is a simple suture which we've discussed, but this one is known as a far near, near far suture. So what this means is that the first bite is far, right? Then we trace, 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 
right then we go near so the second byte is near on the other side the third byte is near on the same side from where we started and finally the fourth byte is far away so far near near far suture this helps in obliteration of a large cavity right obliteration of a large cavity we will prefer this suture over a simple suture right another technique is known as the shoestring technique and this shoestring technique is used for fasciotomy wound closures now fasciotomy you've read is done when there is compartment syndrome and we incise till the deep fascia right this you must have read in orthopedics also and i'll also talk about this in thermal injuries so when we do this fasciotomy the two edges of the skin are so far apart that you can't bring them close in one go because if you try to bring them close in one go it will cut through the skin right it will tear through the skin and we can't do that we don't want that so what we do is that we take a suture like a shoe string and we gradually we gradually tighten this we gradually tighten this over a few days so we will close this over a few days this is gradual closure this is also known as healing by tertiary intention or delayed primary closure or delayed primary closure and this i have covered in the plastic surgery 2 module where i have spoken about wound healing and the types of wound healing primary secondary and tertiary intention so for details please refer to that module regarding what primary secondary and tertiary intention is this is a type of a tertiary intention healing or delayed primary closure <music>